Hi there, how are we all getting on? What's the crack? And welcome to the first ever podcast by Goost.ie. With me tonight is the man, the legend, our Bitcoin resident, it's Mr. Dean Ahern. Um, so yeah, good time to start the podcast. CS 2018 has wrapped up some great technology that we saw. Some, uh, how's it been nice? Not so great. Yeah, dog shit. Let's call it what it is. Um, so we're going to have a, a good look at everything we saw there because that's obviously stuff that we're going to be seeing in the market in the next year or two. We're also going to talk about the new Samsung S9 that's mooted for the first quarter of the year. So, f- yeah, let's. we're going to talk about the rumors, the facts, what we do know, what we're hoping to see, everything that's going on with the Samsung S9. And... Just to lighten up the mood a little bit, you know, it's all not going to be tech on here. Obviously, that's a big part of what we do, but we also love our entertainment. So we're going to have a chat about everything that's worth watching on Netflix this weekend while you try to finish off dry dry January in style. It's How are you? So what do you want to lead with? Do you want to talk CS? Do you want to talk S9? Or do you want to go Netflix first? What are we feeling? Uh, probably like to cover the CES, like, so I might as well just go over that first. Yeah. So that, uh, there's not even enough time to cover it up. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Right, so, the good and the bad of CES. Man, did you see some of the shit that was going on there? Yeah. I mean, Technology's advancing way too fast. I think that, like, <laughs> it's, it's coming in such a range of different things. Like, we had, obviously, things like, you know, driverless cars and... Like, you know, on the big side, we had driverless cars, drones, and all that kind of jazz. And on the low end, we had things like this smart bit that f- goes on your fingernail for UV light. Yeah. So I suppose what we're going to do is we picked out a few of our favorite bits, a few of the bits that we thought were god-awful. So, yeah, yeah cool. Um, What's, yeah, what so was your favorite bit, I suppose? <laughs> really? Let's go. No, I thought that uh, the Monster Smartwatch is a fairly good idea if it can work. And it, it probably, like... Mm-hmm. It's a very tiny, tiny piece of technology to be able to make it to be able to really work properly. But if it does work properly, like it would actually be really cool. Yeah, the Blocks Modular Smartwatch. Um, I like I know for myself, watches are a big thing for me. I love watches. I'm a big watch collector. Yeah. Um. So, so myself, yeah, so. exactly. And combine it with a bit of technology, and you're onto a winner. Yeah. Um. Because like smartwatches, like the kind of tattoo and under only a few years, there's like so much you can do with smartwatch, and also this is kind of like. The next step up from it. Yeah. What I really liked about the block one is it was actually a Kickstarter campaign and just about over a year ago. And yeah, I'm actually just getting it up here now, just having a look at yeah. Uh, yeah, so they were a Kickstarter program yeah. and in what just over a year they're now showcasing at an event like CES in Vegas, showing exactly what they're capable of. For anybody who doesn't know what the block is, it's Basically, a modular smartwatch, it's going to cost around $260. You can pre-order them now. I think they're going to be out around April, May. Mm -hmm. And you can buy the modules for, I think it's going to be $30, $35 a pop. And And what the modules are, essentially, is the links in the watch. So instead of having connections on the actual smartwatch or doing absolutely everything or absolutely nothing, you can pick and choose the bits and pieces that you want. So buy the links, add it on. If you want GPS, you can get GPS. If you don't need that, you don't need... Really, it depends on you, like... Yeah, like, yeah. For me, I wouldn't need the GPS because, let's face it, I don't like to run. <laughs> so... Yeah. So, yeah, GPS tracking ain't going to be relevant for me, but, like, probably, and you know, I'd like to be able to get my notifications. Yeah. Like, maybe answer a call and feel a bit James Bondy and look, be, be that guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. You never know as well, like, they could always, like, stick a SIM card into one of them, like, and it would basically negate the need to have to bring a smartphone while you bring a smartwatch because yeah. already we can already do that yeah but like being able to stick some kind into it kind of gives the cellular connection so you can do a bit more like, without having your phone on you all the time you know i'd love to see if some of the big boys will get involved in that like maybe i'd love to see joe like the amazon alexa yeah the google home or like bixby from samsung one of those kind yeah. of ai personal assistants built into that yeah imagine walking around the street you see something that you you know reminds you of something that you need to do and you just lift up your wrist talk to the watch and go Mirror to me. Remind me there when I go home. By you know, by that yeah. job done, and you get your notification when you go home. So that would be really, really cool to see. And it looks fucking pretty, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, really and really it, it's not just a market for that as well, because like some people prefer having this met the steel watches, like with yeah. the links and that kind of thing. And also the appeals to them as well. But yeah, I can definitely see the likes of Samsung and LG, Huawei, 
Yeah, the Huawei yeah, smartwatch is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, like because like again, like I said, smartwatches are kind of tattooed, like so it's definitely yeah. the next uh, step forward yeah. in terms of uh, developing smartwatches. And you know they're getting somewhere as well when you see fashion brands and actual watch brands. Like recently, I saw Fossil, Fossil Hugo nice Boss. Yeah. Uh, the boss one, I think it's four hundred quid. You can buy them in like shops like Fields. Mm-hmm. Stunning bit of equipment, but yeah, no, the smartwatch thing is somewhere something that's here to stay, and I don't think it's going away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, I, don't know. I still have to get one myself, but um, I still like the other one. Yeah, I mean, and even then, coming off the smartwatch topic, then like moving into our next um, bit of tech that we saw, I mean, you know, smartwatch is the big problem with them is the charge factor. I mean, if if you have a watch, it lasts what a year, two years before you need a battery. And I suppose that's where the we charge or white charge, however you pronounce that, comes into play. Yeah. Which was another really cool bit of tech at CES. That's um, true wireless charging. Yeah, infrared. Yeah. So like you know, even like Apple, I don't know about the other manufacturers, like but Apple have been really trying to figure out how to do wireless charging for a while because they're very late to the game with the uh, what are the um, wireless charging that Samsung had. Yeah. So they need to, it's been a while since they've been the first ones to do something, even with their home pod, you know, they're like copying uh, the likes of Amazon and that, um, with the Bezla screen, so what, they're about two years behind the game in that now, so like they really need to come up with some new innovation that hasn't been done before. Yeah, yeah. sure, they'll probably get the squeeze technology from HTC and wrap it and call it Apple Squeeze, and yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what we're going to be seeing yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah. But no, like even then, I mean, the big thing with wireless charging down the recently has been it hasn't really been wireless. It's your not, phone is still. The thing is, it's probably less convenient than wireless charging because you can't use your phone and charge it at the same time. You have to lift it off the plate. It's yeah, it's exactly, induction yeah. charging. You're ta- you're putting it on a plate. Yeah, but it's still it's still quick. Like I think the SA what charge is fully in like. 40 minutes or something like yeah. that with wireless charging. I can see this w- Y charge thing being a, f- a hipster's dream. Yeah, and yeah. Going into Starbucks, popping out with a laptop, or your phone's just charging, you're there having your coffee, pretending like you know some things. And you know all the people who go to Starbucks and do that kind of stuff, well, I really love it. Absolutely. And, milk it like, and you know the Starbucks are probably one of the first ones to integrate into like cafes as well, because Starbucks is like, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. look, it's gonna, that, that, I think that's going to be a big thing. It looks looks the business. I mean, we'll if you look at it, we have an article up on the website anyway where we go into a bit more detail on these things. So if you're interested in finding out what the Y charge is or the We charge again, however that's pronounced, W I dash charge. Yeah. But we have the article best to CES on the website now anyway, so you can pick that up and give it a read. Yeah. And um, other things from CES, what did you like? I mean, I know. Um. That um. The thing that's kind of looking to rival Tesla, the Toyota, what was it? Oh, the e palette Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I still think that's... That's that a black thing, mirror shit, man. Yeah, <laughs> driverless cars and stuff like that is probably at least seven or eight, if not even maybe ten years down the line. Really? You think that? I said something definitely. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like obviously, that. Tesla have got the driverless cars, but the driver's still in the car. Yeah. But to be able to trust drivers around driverless cars, and, like, I think I saw yesterday, uh, it's uh, the human decision, isn't it? Really, yeah. it's that thing, and like this is where the e palette is gonna be weird because it's not. It's gonna be unmanned completely. Yeah. Um, if anybody has seen the new series of Black Mirror, it's similar, you know, to the pizza delivery cart that's yeah. driving down the road. So you basically can you can make an order, mm-hmm. and this shuttle car will deliver it to your door. So there's no delivery man. There's no person in the car. You're just trusting this. Which basically means we've got a lot more people on the door as well because. There's going to be a lot less drivers, but again, I do think that is a good few years down the line. I think they're probably going to concentrate more on being on driverless cars before they're going to go completely 100% automated without having to have somebody in the actual vehicle yeah. itself. But yeah, even sure, even Richard Ban- Branson was saying the other day, how long is it going to be once we get driverless cars? How long is it going to be before we see driverless planes? No, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like. Obviously, like, uh, but, like, I know people who work with airlines and literally all the pilots do a pair of is, like, take off and land the plane and uh, plane bid. I, I would actually probably say that pilotless planes are probably closer and than this car. driverless cars, definitely. Yeah. They already basically don't drive the plane. They just have to make sure that, like, the plane is doing what it's going to do. So if they can figure out a way to actually take off the plane and get it to land without a pilot, well... Happy they, days, they, they, really. they already have half the battle on, like, so they yeah. just have to do that. Yeah, but again, it is one of those things that 
it is a lot more dangerous than would question though. Would you get in a in a plane with no with with no pilot? Uh, yeah. Would you get in a car when you have no control, or would you trust a driverless vehicle like the Toyota E Palette to deliver goods to your door no. without a person? I would prefer obviously to have my stuff delivered to my door without someone then have to get into a plane where there's nobody actually driving it or flying it. Yeah. But um, because my life isn't at risk. Uh, but again. My big problem would be like if I order pizza, I really don't want to have to walk out in the rain to go collect the pizza. I want it to my goddamn door. Yeah. The car ain't gonna do that. And you know the Americans will <laughs> love it as well because they don't have to tip the delivery drivers. <laughs> valid point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> valid, valid point. I mean, I mean, and if I'm gonna be that lazy, it means realistically, I'm gonna have a lot more time for gaming. So what more do you want? Do you know the HTC <laughs> Vive, the HTC Vive yeah. Pro, the big. The big ball that we saw yeah. at the CS, man, that is something that I want. Played a couple of times with the HTC Vive. Remember last year I was at the Tech Summit with Martin, mm. and we were playing with another world of VR. I don't like. I don't want to talk about it too much because I've never been so scared in my life. Creepy house. Yeah. Really like, felt I like I was in it. Oh yeah. Not cool. I, I haven't used it yet, but I'm mad to use it. I, I used the. Uh, Samsung one, or right, I think it was their second generation uh, VR headset. It's fairly cool. Um, I've had a, I've used a couple of them like cheap knockoff ones, like you know, like the cardboard or yeah, yeah, the grand. But the uh, HTC seem to be really leading the way yeah. when it comes to VR. But the only thing about it is that they're just so expensive. VR just, so just hasn't taken off in the way I expected, really. I mean, mm. Sony brought out what according to specs and according to its usability is phenomenal but at what 400 euro it's the same price as the actual console yeah. I'm sorry I've already bought my console yeah. I don't want to be spending the same price on a peripheral device essentially yeah I think people have to like still have enough just in front of the telly and game you know yeah. like they don't feel the need that like uh, the VR is kind of like a fun novelty thing that you would do at like a family party or like a, something like that to have a bit of crack Nintendo but I couldn't even see myself sitting down and putting on a VR headset and start playing a game. But again, like I said, it's very early days. Like in five years, this might five or six years, like this could be the norm. I'd love to no. see like a commute you know, like a communal VR headset. I mean, as you said, it's a gimmicky thing for fam for Joe you know, when you're playing with family or whatever or anything <coughs> like that. I mean yeah. Nintendo's games consoles down the years have been very multiplayer yeah oriented. I would but they've always been most probably in Boy Nintendo. Even like back in the days of Game Boy, like so they always watch you have to have people play Pokemon together yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, but Train if, cables, like, if, all if that VR jazz. gaming is the way forward, well then the likes of Xbox and PlayStation need to be having a look at it and thinking like that. Because the only thing, well, I'm not. I just want to play Mario Kart in VR. That's that's all I yeah. ask. I don't, I don't, I don't ask for much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or even COD, like you know, COD, like VR would be absolutely unreal. Um, yeah. But, like, Although the Americans, you know, would clean up on that because you know military service. Yeah. Not that jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, um, a couple of countries I wouldn't like to go to. But yeah, no, the Vive Pro does look like it's a big step in the right direction. I mean, the mm-hmm. resolution is going to be a lot better than previous models. And it was already good in the previous models. Yeah. So. Uh, the headphones are inbuilt as well, so it means better sound quality and less, I suppose, interruption or disruption Yeah. in terms mean, of just getting set up. Either. Yeah, it, it's like you're actually you're there even more. And it's, it's just go- also nice a bit more. Yeah, it's going to be a lot more comfortable to wear. Yeah. I mean, yeah. especially they have... And it looks sweet as yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's definitely, they're, they're it's beautiful. Beautiful. They're definitely ahead of the curve with the rest of Does them. Does that move over to Google as part of the bio to HTC, though? Um, That's a good one. We might have to yeah. check that out. We can get back to you on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, um, the Pro does look really, really good. Like so, But again, you just got the only thing that they have to really concern themselves with is price. Like in the market, can people actually afford it? Yeah. But again, like as well, just saying, like the pluses it has over the previous one, having the wireless. Yeah. Because that was that was probably one downfall. Well, aside from the price, that was probably one main downfall that HT had, like their your phone over cables. Like, yeah, I remember when I was yeah. using it. Like I, at one point in time, I kind of had somebody on my back kind of just shuffle me out of the way because I was moving and panicking, and I think they thought I was going to fall over the cables. And I suppose if you're playing yeah. a game, you don't want to exactly be at risk of yeah. injury because of stupidity. So yeah, the wireless yeah, something, 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 capability yeah, is or something that's not yeah. recipe for disaster. But um, no, no, it does look like um, it is going to be fairly impressive. Yeah, and yeah. like 
That, no, that is true. I mean, and again, VR and everything to do with VR, everything gaming related with VR, just the whole aspects of that. We're definitely going to do a full episode on that, I'd say, in the near future, do you think? Worthwhile? Yeah, yeah, it might be a... Work doing it. Um, yeah, let, let us know if you think it's something you want more information on. Yeah. Um, hit they us up on Twitter at goose underscore, underscore, underscore IE. So G O O S E D underscore IE. 3D. Oh, sorry. Yeah. G O O S 3D underscore IE. It's been a long day. I apologize. <laughs> well, thanks for catching me on that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, apart from like all that good stuff, I mean, I think for me, having definitely watched Black Mirror recently, I needed one of those pick-me-up awe moments. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if anybody has seen it, but definitely look it up. It's the Aflac duck. That was probably the real big awe yeah, yeah. tech from the CES. Yeah. I mean, do you want to talk a little bit about it? Or? It's just a nice idea in general. I mean, it's basically, it's just a duck for kids who have cancer and... It's just kind of there to comfort them. It looks like a teddy. It is a teddy, more or less. Yeah. And it has um, kind of a, what would you call it? Kind of, not a button, but like kind of a It's like a badge. A circular badge on his chest. Yeah, yeah. And it can touch. Like an like, Iron Man kind of Yeah, yeah. Button, and it has if you want to call it. If it's sad, like, you know, can you interact with the duck? Like, and the duck will, like, you know, help lighten the mood of it, like, kind of like, and... Well, yeah, the about. emotional connection, I yeah, suppose, to yeah. try help kids who are terminally ill to get through their illness. Yeah. I mean, the big thing that I saw with it was the treatment aspect of things. So as a kid's getting treatment, you know, for their, for their terminal cancer, which is an awful thing to say, mm-hmm. um, but they can reenact a lot of that on the, on the, on the duck, yeah. which I suppose makes things a little less terrifying because I can only assume that's like a terrifying time. Since probably the beginning of time has always been there to come, like children build bonds with the teddy. Yeah, and it's and a, like, um, so like to build a real relationship with the for the, to actually be able to verbally comfort you, like to know, like, and talk to you, like, and tell you everything's going to be. And the fact that you're able to do the treatment on it, it probably makes it a little less scary for a child of that kind of age. Yeah. yeah. Because if they can do it to their bear, they're not, you know, they're going to understand it a bit more and maybe feel better about it because it's like, oh, my, my bear is doing it with me. Yeah. So it's crossing an emotional yeah. connection with technology. I mean, and the best thing for me is that the guys that are actually making it, they're going to, they're, it's, their plan is to manufacture them by the end of this year, start of next year. It's going to take some time, but they're going to be giving them away for free. Yeah, fair so, play. So, like, fair play. Because, like, obviously, like, when you're an, an adult and if you're sick, whether it's cancer or something else, like, you have your family and you have your friends that you can talk to, but, like, with kids, like, obviously, kids wouldn't have that kind of a deep connection with friends and they wouldn't be able to properly have that kind of conversation. It's processing, I yeah. suppose. So yeah. like it's like, again, like we said, like teddy bears are generally children's best friends. So to be able to... Did you yeah. have a teddy bear? Um, yeah, I had a couple of teddy bears. I had a little cheetah one. I had like a collie... Did you name them? Before. Oh, of course. Really? They're almost called cheetah. I had a collie that, of course, was called Lassie. Um, I had an elf one. No, sorry, not elf one. Elf. But uh, he was called Fred, and I still have him at home. This is the best thing I've ever yeah, ever done. My kids are going to be getting Fred, hundred percent, and their kids better be getting him as well. But yeah, hundred percent. And I had my blue blankie. Don't know where that is another. I still that's have. Time I, I, that's how I remember <laughs> that. It was in Fred's. I still have my blankie. Look, <laughs> it's right. It's right there. So do you have a teddy? No. Um. No. No. Not that I. None that stand out or anything like that. Yeah. I mean. No, I had the tree, but Fred was always my boy. Like, my thing when I was young was the Lego blocks and stuff. I used to kind of just disappear away into a corner and start building nonsense. Really. Yeah, yeah. No, I was never being a Lego. Big To be fair, like, I, I actually really, really want to get the Millennium Falcon Lego. I want that so badly. I don't know how big it is, though. And I don't... I, I remember back in the day I used to do Bionicles a lot, and the instructions were fairly straightforward. Yeah. Bionicles, remember them? Yeah. Remember the movie? Yeah. Oh, so good. So good. Um, Any of the Lego movies are good, man. Yeah, yeah. Ninjago. <laughs> oh, the Lego movie. Batman Everything is on, awesome. Christmas. <laughs> Lego Batman. That was good. That, that, that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Got kind of it's ran off. Yeah, yeah, ran off track there a little bit. I mean, yeah. I mean, there, there's all well and good talking about the good sides of tech, but let's face it, some of the stuff that was at that show was absolute rubbish. Yeah, yeah. There was a five grand toilet. Yeah. Smart toilet. I don't know why a company would waste money and resources. Kohler Numi is the name of the company. I'm sorry, I'm calling you out. You're 
bellends, lads. Yeah. Oh, it's five and a half grand for a toilet. What it, you do, and those that you stand up to flush, so instead it, you don't have to reach back for a quarter of a second. No, it's it's even weirder. Go on. It's it's connected with Alexa. It's an Alexa powered toilet. You, you, it's even got speakers, so you can tell you can be like Alexa, play my tunes while I have a dump. Oh, or if you do have the Alexa, you know, obviously the ghost, um, our Alexa uh, memos that we update every so often. Mm. You know, you can get that. So you know, learn while you're in the crapper. But you can also tell the toilet to like lift the seat and flush. Or my favorite piece of ridiculousness that I've seen: activate bidet. Oh, Talk about oh, laziness. Oh. The, only, the only good thing I could probably say that it would be good for is in the morning, let's say, toilet can be debated the news. That's literally the only thing. Or maybe like. I don't think I'm in there that long to, have yeah, to do that. No, like just, like, literally just give me the headlines, like, but that's the only benefit you see from it. Like, it's just, it's just a, like, long term Long term marriages. And it's just pointless technology. And that is long term marriages. What do you mean? Put the toilet seat down. <laughs> Love. Jesus, uh, that sounds awful. No, it could be anybody, male, female. But yeah, <laughs> we're, let's face it, it's mostly going to be, you know, guys yeah. leaving the toilet seat down or up or pissing oh, all over. Yeah. Who knows? It's like, just tell the toilet to do it itself. Yeah, exactly. Alexa, put the toilet seat down for me. Thank you very much and move on with your day. But for five and a half grand, I'd rather use my hand. Yeah, it's just, it's just <laughs> ridiculous tech. Like, and I honestly have no time for it. And I, and I, how much is a toilet anyway? I've never it's not five and a half grand. Yeah, it's definitely not. Like, it's just like so outlandish and ridiculous. And uh, I think we should move on. You should toilet. You know? Yeah, so please. Like, it's just, it's just stupid. Like, I There's going to be a rapper who buys it. You're going to see it on like yeah. a new version of like MTV Cribs. It's going to be like Stormzy walking through yeah. and says, Look at my toilet! If it came out like 15 years ago, I could definitely see 50% of a smart toilet. Yeah. I mean, just know for a fact it would be gold as well. Oh, no. don't even. Yeah. Don't no. even. The Kardashians will definitely have smart toilets. 100%. They, they, they don't poop. How oh, dare, how right, dare yeah. you suggest that they, No. Yeah. I mean, like, it doesn't even... It gets worse. If you think a smart toilet is bad, imagine a masturbation infographic. Like... Like I'm there. Do you know? I don't need <laughs> to be recorded. Do you know what I... Mean? Yeah, it's... It, I mean, what it seems to be is that it's... it's you wear this kind of like Fitbit like thing on your wrist, I guess, or I don't know, strap it to your toy, I guess, depending on whatever you're using, who knows. Um, it's called Arcasm, and what you'll get is this lovely little artistic video infographic of your wank. So, you know, like the sound bars, yeah. or like nice fluffy pictures. Like, again, like the reason you record stuff. Is to be able to go back later on and analyze whatever it was, whether it's like you know, like a fitness app to see how fast you're running or like how far you're running, or if yeah. It's after like ha- after having a wank, I just want to like know, hide in shame. Now, I'm not hiding. I'm not sitting down like three or four hours later, and it's like, oh, I wonder how fast I was moving. No, I just want to. So, I just want to hide away in shame. I don't want yeah, to like. Honestly, if I lose it, I give myself to it immediately after. I know, but even after all this like sexting stuff we've seen on the news in the last couple of days, yeah. fifteen year olds, fifteen year old young players are just gonna send their own go, look at the picture I made. Yeah, yeah. Wow, oh. just it's I mean, like we're talking there's a ridiculous thing. I mean, did you see the Kodak coin? This is Kodak. Well they were trying to make a cryptocurrency. Oh, Jesus. Obviously they realised when the disposable cameras were going out of fashion with digital cameras, they didn't get on the boat fast enough with this and this is their intent way of learning their lesson. Did so, they bring out a phone a few years ago? They did. It's locked. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so now trying to get into crypto knots. Yeah, and it has a mining machine and everything that you Cryptocurrency can... isn't a thing that companies should take on and develop. It's uh... It's not, it's not something like Samsung should start making like Samsung coin like or Apple or Oi coin or something yeah, like that. Somebody from Kodak just obviously heard, yeah, cryptocurrency is going to be big. Let's make one. Yeah, yeah like the, the market's already very saturated. It started off onto a big coin. I think Ethereum came next and I got on, I jumped on the Loi coin bandwagon there a few weeks ago. There's an article up on the website about it. You have two. You have the introduction to what cryptocurrency is in general. Yeah. And there's the... How-to guide. How-to guide. Yeah. 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 I mean, and that's obviously another thing that we definitely need to talk about in more detail, so... Mm. I can just say a point of recording. Litecoin is actually quite cheaper now if you want to jump on the bandwagon with me. 
Um, <laughs> Dean's only saying that so he can try to get some more dollars. He's, <laughs> he's thinking, if I can get as many of our listeners to sign up to this, I'm going to make some dollars. Yeah. But, um, Cheeky. Yeah. Why? I'm only saying that because I'm not on the bandwagon yet. Oh, yeah. Why Kodak is getting involved in it? It's just, I don't know. It's stupid. It's just it's desperation, really. Like, you know, like, I'm saying to myself, like, you know, the mobile market is too saturated. The uh, television market is too saturated. Cameras and all that. Phones are replacing cameras. Uh, let's jump on some cryptocurrency. Yeah, it's I like, mean, no, it's nonsense. Not, it's not I don't even know how they're trying to make a profit off it, really. Maybe they'll go try and take a percentage of sales that are made through cryptocurrency. But cryptocurrency sales being properly regulated. Not even regulated, but companies allowing sales through cryptocurrency. It's not banking not regulated or anything yeah. like that. Or yeah. I think Dell is probably the biggest company that accept cryptocurrency. I think they accept it, I'm not sure. Uh, not necessarily. I don't know if anybody has heard of Lioness. They're, you know, the good... I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a, a giant loyalty program. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm. That, this is something I'm actually going to be writing about in the near future, anyway. So, uh, more information on that is going to come up. Mm-hmm. Uh, clubs like Manchester United, Roma, Roma now have this. They're sponsored the whole way around by this mm-hmm. crowd. Um, basically, if I buy something from a shop, I'll get one percent of my cash back, of my cash back in this app, so I can build up my money. Mm. to spend so the more i'm buying through these companies the more money i build up to use in future but in return what these companies get from you signing up is if i go so for example if i go shopping tesco's i get one percent of my cash back there right yeah and then i go to i don't know let's say boozham yeah and i buy a wrap there or whatever I get my 1% back from those but because i signed up with tesco or whatever they'll get one percent of that transaction also and and so and and so on it goes through the mm. really cool, interesting kind of thing. Uh, yeah, whoever like that line of company could like a fortune and, off it. And they're like going that. to be uh, and they're going to be accepting crypto yeah. in the near future. I don't know what one or what detail is mm-hmm. available on that yet. Um, there's been no like real announcements on that yet, but they're going to be a big one that obviously starts accepting crypto. So that's going to be. I was supposed to turn around what was a bad news story into something that's possibly something. Yeah. I mean, Jesus. I mean, what did you see the video of like the robot strippers? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Why? Just like oh, I don't know. I, yeah. Like I, I, you go to a strip club because you want to get away from the porn you watched on your phone or whatever. <laughs> like you know, you want to get the real thing. Like, well, I, I, don't, I don't think to myself like so. I want to have a robot dance on me. It's so, not like it just. Uh, yeah, it's weird. It's just another one of those things. That, but like, on I, the upside, you yeah, will have a coin flip. <laughs> I, I guess the whole novelty behind, or not the novelty, but the uh, appeal to the uh, sex dolls. You know, there's obviously some people out there who will actually pay a lot of money for them. I don't know how much they are. I think they're a few hundred quid, you know. But a stripper robot. So no. I can see maybe, maybe it's, cring- like, it's cringy. Some tech entrepreneur fella might bring it into the likes of like Amsterdam or something like that, a place that's like famous for the likes of this red light district and the strip clubs and all this kind of unorthodox. Um, There's got like, scene. Th- Thailand, they're going to have ladyboy stripper bots. Thailand, yeah, Thailand. <laughs> and John, they're going to take off in Thailand as well. Like, so, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just mm. one of those things that like. It's, it's just cringy, man. Yes. It's, it, I mean, almost as cringy as the LG Chloe. Should we. Should we did you did you see that video? Did you see that clip? The LG Chloe. Oh dear God! So it's a, like a smart home robot personal assistant kind of j- jazz thing, and the God bless the guy who was actually doing the speech because the robot wasn't interacting with him at all. <laughs> it it started off really well, really positive. Chloe, what what's my plan today? You have to go to the gym at ten o'clock. Cool. What's for dinner? Radio silence. And he had to start doing the presentation manually. So he's yeah. like, so now imagine if I, if it said chicken. And I'd be like, what recipes can I make with chicken? Still radio silence. And this continues for a good five to ten minutes. I mean, if you can get the video up there, maybe we can um, give some of the audio on it. Because like, what would it be called? LG Chloe fail is how I yeah. found it. Um, Oy, it's, it's a bad man. But yeah, even how like he goes through this whole process of the robot not interacting, and then his final sentence is, 
and it'll work seamlessly in your home with no problems and no issues. And you're like, really, dude? We've all just watched you flatline. Yeah, yeah. It was like Apple when they were doing the old facial recognition thing with the uh, the release to 10. But he obviously had his, like, pitch set and was playing it off as everything was going to work. Did you get it? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to find the actual fail part now. Like, so we're not I sure. think it's about halfway through. Okay, so... Yeah, if you turn oh. the audio up there. And... Okay, yeah, so... Let's get that, let's get that up. Chloe, what's my schedule? Yeah, let's do this. You need to go to the gym at 10 a.m. today. So far, so good, right? Set the washer to the sportswear setting. Here we go. Chloe, am I ready on my washer and cycle? Critics. Oh, it's <laughs> just bad, isn't it? Chloe, what's for dinner tonight? Oh, this is tough to watch. Yeah, it's awful. Oh, God. Okay, Chloe is not going to talk to me, and Chloe doesn't like me, evidently. It looks like we should use the chicken. Chloe, are you talking to me yet? What recipes could I make with chicken? It gets worse. Okay, we're going to search recipes, oh, and we're going to find a buffalo chicken pizza. This smart kitchen is changing the game. It's doing it all for you, seamlessly and effortlessly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's definitely effortlessly anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's seamless as well. Yeah, it's oh, so, so oh, seamless yeah. you have to do it yourself. Oh, so like that's basically almost the same as the Alexa already. Like, so like yeah. you know, when I say to the Alexa, like, what's my, like, I can connect it up to my reminders on the schedule on the phone and say, what's my, uh, like, so Alexa, yeah, Alexa's Alexa's gonna yeah. take over, man. Yeah, that's Alexa's, gonna be in our cars and everything. I had it and it is, it is really good. I hadn't probably set up my phone yet now, especially with Apple. It's a nightmare because Apple are just so locked down. They don't want anyone else. But you're a big Apple fan. Yeah, I am a big Apple fan, but it does again. It just annoys me the way that they just refuse. Like to, you're the Apple man of the team. Yeah, I mean, the three of us are Samsung. Like to be fair, we haven't seen the HomePod yet. They announced, I think, back in like October, and I think uh, I read earlier on there on uh, GSM Arena that um, they're after shipping one million already to suppliers. So um, I reckon it's going to be probably released soon, and it will be really good for will you buy Apple it? users. Will you buy it? I think it's like two hundred fifty quid or something Somehow. like that. No. And like probably not. I mean, like the only thing I use the Alexa for is saying, Alexa, connect to my iPhone, and it connects to Bluetooth. And then I play. I have to play the music by myself on Spotify. If I did it through Apple Alex. Music, I'd be able to say no problem. I'd be able to say iPhone play this song, that song. But because I use Spotify, Apple just refuses to allow that kind of thing. Whereas if I was to connect to my Samsung, I'd be able to go Alexa play. I don't know, let's, if, I really don't want to share my music taste <laughs> with the internet, it's I have the same music I taste. I follow you on uh, Spotify and I see your music taste. Yeah, it's not. It's so poor. Yeah, it's, it's nothing to be proud of, really. Yeah. So, yeah, look, I'd be like, yeah, Alexa, play me some Westlife on Spotify, and, you know, I'll yeah, get my... It works really fine, but yeah, yeah whatever, it's completely locked down. But again, like, if the home pad, if they do it right... It could be really good, like, you know, but again, it's just, we haven't seen it, so we can't really speculate on it yet. Should we move away from CES and talk about the big release of, I suppose, this half of the year? Yeah, I mean, we have, Yeah, the S9. I mean, we do have the, the two big hitters every year, Samsung, yeah, Apple, and Samsung, Samsung always go first. Yeah, it's mad. It's, it only feels like the S8 only came out recently, and the S8 is still, it hasn't gotten old, it's still an extremely impressive phone, and people are still buying it and, like, you know, upgrading to the S8. Um, every time I play with my S8, every time I actually have the chance to properly play with my S8, I, f- I figure out kind of new bits and pieces. I mean, yeah. I've only really got Bixby operating in the last couple of weeks. Mm. I don't find it. It seems like it was a bit of a fail, but again, it's, it's still in the very early it's days. It's not bad. Like, I'm surprised they actually waited for, that long to get their own. Um, for early days, Joe, you know, for first generation, I guess it's really good. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I mean, the big thing for, with me for Samsung this year is, I suppose, the interconnectivity with everything. I mean, last year we had the Dex. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, that and, was and really I really cool. do think that that thing. 
I didn't. Um, I think Gary did. Yeah, Gary um, did, yeah. And he said it is impressive. Unless it turns it's your, the future of Office. Yeah, it's an, it's an HDMI cable that so you can stick it into your, your laptop or your TV or whatever. You don't even need... Thing. No, you don't even need to do that. You can plug the... It's like You can get a U just plug it into like a monitor with a USB or HDMI, whatever cable, I guess. Yeah, yeah to a lighter phone. Right? Yeah, the DeX. The, the DeX, DeX plugs into a display yeah, yeah. and then you Later put your on. phone onto the DeX. And it charges it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So and it also turns it into the desktop as well, so it becomes the powerhouse for the desktop yeah, yeah. which is really cool because I guess if you're you know, an international businessman and you're like flying here there and everywhere yeah. I mean you can do the work on your phone you get to the office in a different country you don't need to be logging a laptop or a tablet or having a desktop here a desktop there just a phone that's in the pocket plug it into the new decks up your work again and off you go I'd say the it next is. probably generation of that will be to probably get rid of the decks altogether and kind of go down to Apple rules whereas like if I play in, if I have an Apple TV connected up to my TV and I'm watching Netflix on my phone I can just go airplane and it'll play Netflix on my TV I'd yeah. say that'll probably be the next step or something so you might be able to deal with all devices and probably just stick it with laptops with their own laptops kind of thing but they'll probably get this kind of a the upside of Android, though, is that it is a bit more open. So, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, so, yeah. I know I have a Samsung television, but the TV I had before it was an LG smart TV, and it's yeah. and I was able to download the like a remote control app because I genuinely lost the control, and that was able to oh, connect, connect with the with TV. We go over the specs anyway. Yeah, go over the specs. What what you know? What what do we know? What's fact? What's rumor? So, I guess. Of course, there's going to be two, as there always is. Uh, S9, 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 S9 Plus? It's kind of, it seems like it's going to be maybe like an S8, S, but yeah, it's going to be a 5.8 yeah. into a 6.2 inch uh, Q, uh, QHD Plus Super AMOLED curved display. Um, Isn't that basically the same display that was on the phone last year, though? It's just yeah. big, bright. It's still extremely impressive. With the so, Infinity display. Yeah, Love yeah. the Infinity display. It's a real nice, mm -hmm. clean look. Less bezels, more um, display. Weird thinking? ratio, though. Yeah, it is a bit. But like, uh, even if you're um, watching Netflix or anything, you always seem to have this little bit of like black banner yeah. on the side. That's the only downside. But yeah, but I think that, the Netflix are kind of starting to accommodate for that now. Yeah, well, like just it, it is. It is the ratio. It's yeah, yeah. That eighteen five nine or yeah, yeah. not that eighteen nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and having nerd moments. Yeah. <laughs> um, Android. And if I don't, what is it? Oreo this year? Oreo. Yeah, Oreo. I'm not Oreo. sure what to go do. Oreo. Like it seems like. Like, if they're if they're aiming to get the whole way through the alphabet with this, they're, they're going to the struggle to continue developing Android. But again, like you know, there's always improvements to be made, I suppose, and everything. Um, we have the new Snapdragon eight four five that usually kind of um new processor. It uh usually what would you say debuts on the Samsung? It's kind of got to that point, isn't it? Speaking of which, when they're de they're going to be debuting this at the MWC this year. The uh, Samsung? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's, what, 16th, 17th February? The, February. the announcement's in February, but the yeah. launch, they're saying, what, what, what I was reading earlier was that the it's announcement's going to be at MWC, shipping on the 1st and release on the 16th or something. Yeah, like will launch at MWC in February. Um, according to um, a leak, uh, it launched on the 26th of February, and pre-orders will begin on the 1st of March. See, like, that's, thing, that's one thing I like admire about Samsung over Apple. Apple announced the HomePod there back in like October, and it's still not released. So it's like they announced their products, and they wait a month or two to actually release it. So what's the point in announcing it if you're not going to release it? That's what, that's what Samsung is doing. Like, so they're, the hype. They're it's on the it's all about the hype. Yeah. All about the hype. Choo, choo. Yeah, like they're yeah. announcing on the 26th, and it's being... Pre-orders are there on the first. Uh, what I'm finding is interesting yeah, is the camera, though. Um, yeah. The because camera. the camera spec seems to be in like according to most consumers, I guess. Because and we both know this, I suppose, from our time working on the firing line of the phone stores. Yeah, the two of us we used to work behind the counter in phone shops. Mm -hmm. Um. Good time in our lives. Good time though. Good time. Yeah, good, yeah, good time. Yeah, but yeah. Um. Where was I going with that? Yeah, the camera specs because. I suppose everybody looks at the megapixel number, yeah, but, but that has nothing to do necessarily with the overall quality. No. I mean, this year's camera is going to be a dual camera, 12 megapixel. Yeah, yeah. which... With optimal image stabilization. For people who don't know what that is, it basically means that if you are taking a video, uh, it'll be a lot less shaky. The camera actually slightly, slightly moves a tiny bit inside the phone to accommodate the shakiness in your hand. 
So last ten year videos. Yeah. Um, and again, it comes down to the processor and that kind of thing as well, and how well they can actually process. I think twelve megapixels needs to be kind of sweet spot now. Yeah. Most manufacturers. It's about the, it's, there's something to do with like the light intake and how that picture then is like digitally transformed and created and all that kind of jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, the camera, even though you're seeing a lower number on the camera. And you probably will see, I suppose, phones for 200, 250 euro that have a 12 megapixel camera. The Samsung S9 and S8 models, even though it's a 12 megapixel, it's going to be far, far, far superior because of the yeah. supporting tech around it. Exactly, it's not like nice for point. And game changer, built in FM radio. Woo! Really? It's actually scandalous. That, that they have to make a point of that. No, but like the fact that smartphones actually haven't had a built in FM radio. Yeah, yeah. Really nice. the... so I had a built-in FM radio with my Sony Ericsson's back in the day. Oh, and there, there, when the I used to tunes, the Sony when I used to work, phones, man. When I used to work in the phone shops, you used. did have people who wanted an FM radio, and they were like, they would ask, "Does this phone have an FM?" radio? I actually what have. have I I use the TuneIn Radio app. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I suppose I can have a built-in FM radio. It, 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 it will. And help. sometimes, I'll be honest, like I'm like and. You know, I, I work like maybe I might get sick of listening to music and Nile Boylan might be on and I'd stick it up or you know, Nile Boylan 4 FM and I would stick it up on the computer so be able to actually listen to the radio on my phone like, you know, yeah. it's not something that like would excite me but it's nice to have it well for me I like doing things with, on Saturdays when I can but then football gets in the way Yeah. so if I could go I suppose for you know, my, my little walk on a Saturday mm. and be listening to the commentary of you know, the Saturday football matches because it's very important to keep on top of my fancy football team Oh yeah. I think I'm playing you next week I think it's no, like, not, not this week, the net, not, oh, yeah, not this week, the following week. Yeah, yeah, I think we Yeah, right. we have a little fantasy football thing going, and, you know, there's a few punishments for the losers, so... Yeah, yeah. Not, so, um, not fun. Um, I mean, I suppose on the point of even the FM radio, guess what's not going away this year on the S9? They're, the they're, keeping, jack. they're keeping the headphone jack. Yeah, yeah, and they should. Like, I've got, I've done it for seven now, and I don't have a headphone jack. And Jesus Christ, it is the biggest inconvenience in the world. I will be inside and work. <laughs> You're such a cranky old man. Listening to my music, and oh no, my battery is going to die. I literally have to stop listening to music on my phone so I can charge it. It's ridiculous. But it's okay. I have brought out an adapter that I can stick into my phone that has two slots for my music and a charger. No, Did you not just I get a pair of Bluetooth ridiculous. headphones? I could, but I don't know, it's just something about having the cable. Like I, just, I actually have got a pair of Bluetooth headphones, but I, I, actually, I, I actually quite like the Apple earpods. They get a lot of stick, but I, I don't see anything wrong with them. But I also the don't Sony, see The Sony ones much. are really pretty. Yeah, they are. But yeah, like, I'd yeah. lose them in a second. They're tiny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Same with the... Uh, sorry, I said... Uh, I, when I said uh, headphones, I meant the wired ones, but Apple also had the AirPods about last year. Yeah, that yeah cost, sorry. What, 150 quid? Yeah. yeah, 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 and as well, you look like a bit of a bed and walking on the street with two white yolks sticking out of yours. Like, you know, I prefer if they were like a bit smaller and a bit more supple, but like they have yeah. the so it comes down about an inch then outside of here as well. So, not mm. great design wise. I mean, that's what I guess the, those are the kind of specs that we know we're getting on the S9. What we don't know what we're getting, but we're hearing rumors of it is that mythical, magical thing we've been hearing about for a few smartphones for a while now. It's the in display fingerprint scanner. So yeah. no button and the unlocking of the phone will be done through the display. Yeah, I know. Uh, do you think that's actually going to happen this year? Or what? What's your feelings on it? What do you think? Like it's, a, I, I reckon that most of the phone manufacturers have probably been working on this for at least the past two or three years. Um, there was a lot of talk about last year. Apple seemed like they were on the brink of being able to bring it into the They just 10. never followed through. It just at the last minute they were just like, here, look, we can either go into this, which is too glitchy, or else we can just give it another year. So I, I don't know, maybe Samsung might, it might be too early in the year because Apple had basically a whole year of being able to develop the iPhone 11 or whatever it's going to be called. Um, but if Samsung can bring X, it up X, before I, Apple, um, yeah, if, if Samsung can bring it up before Apple, like, so it'll just be another little kind of. Another go. Yeah. You could call it another yeah. fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but no, uh, it's not and something like that people are demanding too much, but I think it'd be a bit more screen or phone or screen room. Um, yeah, it'd be a nice touch to it. Yeah. And as well, they're just after patenting, they want to bring out, uh, do I put the camera underneath the screen as well, the front camera underneath the screen. Whoa, so that's going to be They weird. basically want to get rid of like, the borders at the bottom. They just want a top. whole screen yeah, display. Screen. And I'll be honest, like, I'm looking at like, the Apple and Xiaomi have a completely um, bezel screen. Like, they're, 
It's not. not it's not as st- like. sexy. It's not as stylish. Yeah, is it? aesthetically, like no, it's not that nice. But again, it just seems like the way all the manufacturers. You want you want a bit of sex appeal in your phone, yeah, you know? Yeah, they all just they're all seem to go on that route. So I don't think it's we're going. It's going to stop any time soon. No, I mean the S nine is going to be a big baller this year, and definitely as the event, as MWC comes to pass, we'll be getting more information, more detail on the product. Um, so it's probably the, the, the S9 is definitely not a subject we're going to be moving away from in the near future. Yeah, we'll talk about it a bit more depth when we see it, a bit more realistic. Yeah, when, when we hit MWC, I think we talk, we'll talk. we have a look at Sony, HTC, Huawei, all the brands, what they're bringing out, what to expect, because April really is new phone season. That's, yeah, we'll that, that's new phone that. season. April, yeah, April yeah. May, that's when we see it all. The P, Huawei are probably going to have a P11, P twelve, is it? It's P, no, is it? P twelve, I don't know. No, check uh, No, I thought the P ten. I'm pretty sure. Was oh yeah, the P twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, yeah. P twelve. Yeah. It will be the P. It'll be the P twelve. We'll have the new Sony, whatever they're gonna call it. Probably the ZZ or something this year. So was the XZ and XZ premiums. I mean, they're gonna start running out of letters, so they're just gonna. What are they gonna call it? The triple A or the yeah, ZZ? Yeah. I don't know. But we'll look at that. We'll look at the Huawei. We'll look at HTC because. HTC will be a very interesting one to look at this year because now they're part of the Google thing. So whether we see the Pixel, a new release of the Pixel, mm. or do we see a Pixel be branded as a HTC and rolled out in another ma- manner, yeah. that'll be an interesting one to look at because obviously the Pixel and the HTC phones have been separate and this is going to be the first release yeah. of I know the re-release of the, brand. the, uh, the U11 not really like, but they're like it's like a U11S or like what they did with the M8 and the M8S. Yeah, yeah, I think. I know you had hard problems with your M8S. The M8, fantastic phone, but the M8S was heartbreak. M8 is probably still one of the best smartphones I've had in a while, in a yeah, long, long time. Yeah, and even design was like it was really nice. But no, um, HTC are bringing out a new um, version of it. I think it's just going to have a couple of like nice little updates, and yeah. like that's going to the screen's going to be a bit bigger. Um, so um, yeah, we'll see. It's, like, it's a bit weird that they're actually not really bringing out a brand new model altogether. They're just trying to upgrade the previous one. But, like, but is that because way. maybe they're just, maybe they're focusing on a new Pixel release? Yeah, maybe. and we'll, that information we'll definitely have by the end of February when we get through the MWC. See what's going on there. These yeah. are kind of events now that hopefully in the near future we can start getting our asses over to. Yeah, I don't know if that's going anywhere. Like that. yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. see. Um, go fund me no we're joking <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're not like that we don't do ads we don't want your money but if you want to give it to us we're never going to yeah. say no. <laughs> but like yeah anyway Jesus sorry apologies Um, yeah so I suppose that pretty much wraps up what we know what we think about the S9 really yeah so I suppose we'll wind down with a bit of a Netflix. bit of Netflix, Netflix and chill, and chill. yeah, yeah. That, was, that was hard hard, hard on Netflix like, more are you the big spoon or the little spoon uh, <laughs> I'm I don't know I'm just a spoon on my own a lonely spoon. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll be the big spoon. All the way at the Come moment here. seems to be uh, Black Mirror. Um, yeah. Uh, but honestly, I can only watch maybe at a push two episodes at a time. Now I'm three or four. Now I'm taking three or four break. I actually have to mentally prepare myself before I decide to <laughs> watch another. Do episode. you have like exercise that you do? Because like I know myself, like I get my I get like. I make myself some food, mm. like comfort food. Yeah, yeah. Like I just bowl of chips, pint of milk. That's such a weird combination. <laughs> uh, maybe this is why I'm single. And <laughs> moving on, prepare myself, sit down, watch Black Mirror. I mean, this season has been epic as well. Oh, yeah, actually, I've seen this season. I'm really? Sort of it, yeah. The way I don't know. So I'm, I'm literally watching random episodes on different seasons. What was your favorite episode? Well, I don't know. My favorite one that disturbed me the most. I would probably have to say, and can we just say? Spoiler alert! Going forward, what what series um, are we talking? Because if we're talking like series one or two, I don't actually know. What I think we series. might. We're pretty much okay. Only Christmas, anyway. I think that's it. That Give me a second. That one Before you really run your mouth, I'll have a look. It's definitely not the new season anyway, because I haven't watched any of the new season. Um, but yeah, no, that one really messed me up, and I don't even really know how to go. About to season two. Yeah, season two. Most people have probably seen it, and it's like these two guys in a cabin. They're there for like five years. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, and that was that was mind bending. To put your mind into something like an Alexa, they copy your mind, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. like you're still. If I were to do it, I would still be normal. I'd still be going on my day to day life in the real world, but there'd also be an exact copy, that in a physical form, but in a digital platform, where there's just a whiteness or around me. 
and and in the same asylum like a little yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, and the user can punish it by saying, okay, I'm just going to lock you in there for three weeks now with nothing to do. Again, like I said, just a desk in front of you with nothing on it. And they can and speed up the clock, be, but it's three weeks. It might only be like five seconds for me in real life, but it's three weeks for them. And, um, at the See, end I think it, that's the whole point of Black Mirror, though. It's, tr- it's. I mean, you know what the name means. Yeah, it's the whole when, turning off the TV. Like, and it's a Black Mirror look at that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and the whole, I suppose, the idea... Oh, Black Mirror isn't necessarily to showcase what technology can be. It's to show the extreme levels. It's it, almost like a warning. It's almost like saying, "Don't mess with this kind of stuff because this is what." Yeah, let's happen. let's treat it. So, let, I let, do think like putting your mind into different simulation stuff is way extreme. But I suppose like people are. But, years but so, I suppose even tech and science are trying to push for that for like human immortality. And yeah, moving artificial episode. intelligence into a robotic form so that you live forever. Yeah. And they don't they think of episode, the emotional yeah. psychological effects that that might have on a person. Yeah, yeah. They like, say, they at what point do they do that? They have to do that, obviously, prior to your death. No, they did one alright, basically. It was like a woman had uh, locked in syndrome mm-hmm. or something like that. She couldn't move or anything, but they were able to put like, a little Chip. tiny device just stick on the side of her head. And she went into this place that was basically kind of like meant to be... Uh, Oh, it's got utopia kind of. Oh like, yeah, that episode. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, after, yeah and you yeah. can choose whether you want to stay there permanently, keep a consciousness and there die. permanently after you die, or so you can just come in and out as you please. Um, I like I get it. That can be a good idea. <laughs> for, <laughs> for people who are like who are like terminally ill and like so like they, they can't move or someone like who is look, like, it's a fantastic show. Like that, it can be a good. It's idea. one of the best shows on Netflix. But, and but them, fire beware, man. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah, it does, it does and if, and if you're trying problem. to be cheeky on a first date, don't, don't, d- don't. just don't, don't, no. don't black mirror. I mean, you might be thinking, yeah. let's get something a bit scary and like we can all cuddle yeah. up and oh, get get cushy and whatnot. But you're yeah. genuinely going to be sitting there in the fetal position on the couch, going, nah, yeah, yeah, nah, no, nah, not not happening. Watch on a first date. No, no, don't just, just, um, <laughs> but no, um, it does. It's a good series and we have like great conversations. Seem like, and I like the way as well. It's a nice change that we have a series where you don't have to watch every single episode. Nor and it's not always and episode. it's not always a happy ending. Uh, I don't think there there is no happy endings as far as I can say. I don't think I've seen one. I think that's why it's so disturbing. It's not you don't get the happy ending at the end. It's just it's the whole point is that like, there's no like, happy ending. Going back, go back to White Christmas and to try and keep it as vague as possible, basically, um, as when they put the guy into the simula- his consciousness into the simulation. At the end of the episode, um, this copper interrogator thought it would be funny to put him on a thousand years a minute. And they did the maths on Reddit. It was over the Christmas period, so they wouldn't have been in the next day. They were taking one day off, so it would have been about thirty-nine hours that um he would have been that they would have been away from it. And at a thousand years a minute, it was working out about two point four million years that he was stuck in his cabin by himself, snowed in with the same Christmas song playing over and over again. And in his mind, in the simulation, it actually lasts two point four million years. And it's not even a case that like it's only two point four million years. If they come in on a Monday morning and they decide to wait until two minutes, two minutes past nine instead of nine o'clock to take them out of the simulation, that's actually two thousand years from. So yeah. just like when I was thinking about it, like I just it just I, I couldn't even fathom it. Like it was just too terrifying to think about. I took like four days off of Black Mirror after watching that. Episode. Yeah, like it really messed me up. I like Black Mirror, but like. Can we talk about something slightly happier? Yes. I know it's not going to be massively happier, but it's Marvel. Yeah, and Marvel always makes it better. easier to watch. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's probably not the, even the nicest shows, but The Punisher, man. Yeah, the Punisher. Really you're, you're not finished it yet, though, are you? Uh, no, I am. I'm on episode 10. It's 13 it. episodes, which is really good. And the great thing about Punisher is, like, I'm not into Marvel and superhero series. I've never watched The Flash. I've never watched Arrow. You've never watched The Flash? I've never watched Superwoman. No, that's right. So uh, they just don't appeal to me at all, but the Punisher doesn't even seem like it's... Flash uh, good, though, uh, You'd like the Flash. Flash would be right up your alley. But um, the good thing about Punisher, it just doesn't, it doesn't come across as a uh, super film at all. He's no superpowers, there's no super villains. He's just an angry man with a lot of guns exactly. and military yeah. training. It's like law-abiding citizen. It's like that film where basically his family gets killed. And it's cast and so goes. well. Your man is so good at it. He was, he was Shane in Walking Dead. I can't remember his name. <coughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll fish that out there. But yeah, no, he was so born to play Frank yeah. Castle. He is Frank Castle. Yeah. He just has that moody, yeah, just that surly head. head. Yeah. And you you could see this fella as a bit, fella who came back from war all kind of mentally scared and whatnot. Yeah. And then everything that happened after that, he went, nah, 
Yeah, yeah. Right. Let, let, let's go do this. Yeah, but I would definitely highly recommend. And apparently, as well, it's actually made to be binged because every single episode that ends will literally go straight into the next episode. John Bernthal. Yeah. Yeah, so like, yeah, he's Sorry. a really good actor. Is that, even in Walking Dead, he was very cranky, like, so, like, so yeah, this, this show definitely suited him. Yeah, he's very it's good at like, like, this guy who's got a grudge against everybody? It seems like everybody, but, but it's not. It's, it's the, not the like, system, the structure. Yeah, the system. The system. Yeah, yeah, system. yeah, yeah it's the system. American it's government, system. and he's going to take it down. Yeah, yeah. The only way he knows how. Yeah. Um, guns and violence, guns and violence. But, I mean, like, enjoy the Marvel stuff that's on Netflix while you can, because realistically, now that Disney owns, you know, yeah. everything, yeah. and it's they've obviously it. bought out Fox and that, that Hulu platform, yeah. and Disney Life is there, so how long is it going to be before we see the likes of the Marvel content taken off Netflix and just brought on to... Disney Life. The, Dis- yeah. the, well, yeah. Disney Life seems like it's going to be kept towards Kate's yeah, stuff, yeah. but yeah. it'll probably Hulu move on to Hulu or... One of those. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, binge it out while you can. Watch Luke Cage. Luke Cage is fantastic. Luke Watch Cage is good, yeah. Jessica Jones, all right. Avoid the Iron Fist. Don't even know what that is. Don't, don't watch it. it. Yeah. It's no, like, if you didn't like an Ed superhero thing, I oh, definitely would not. <sighs> I don't like anything against superhero films. I think Marvel is really good, but it's. They just don't really do it. I'd like to involve a bit more thinking. Like, the whole thing, just from start to finish. Punisher was done perfectly. Luke Cage was done perfectly. Right actor, right storyline, right cast. Yeah, yeah. And they took everything that they got right. And with the Iron Fist went, do you know what? How about we don't? Uh, the actor is awful. He's, a, he's also an awful person. I don't know if you've seen any of those stories um, I don't know where that is so. yeah we're better at it yeah we're better off not get, opening that kind of another world here not to watch Iron Fist. yeah just another yeah just outside of that just the show itself is absolute horseshit um, other things to watch on Netflix obviously Friends Friends is there yeah if Friends you know, finally if for some reason you don't have Comedy Central uh, yeah Friends is there now I always say I watch a Friends what do you mean there. if you don't have Comedy Central if you're at home and it's a sick day you can binge. Yeah, you can still binge on Comedy Central. It's there every single day. I watch it every day on my day off. It's right. It's on daytime TV. All right. But again, if you All want, right. if you want to just be able to watch okay. whatever episode you want kind of thing. But yeah, yeah, I only said I watched our friends like a year and a half ago because again, like I said, there's nothing. And what do you think TV. of all these people bitching and oh, moaning geez. about it? It's different times. What did it want to do? It was like, the 90s. Yeah. And like, chill. For the, people are actually more chilled back in the 90s now that they are now. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, what, like, when you relax, like, it's just a little bit of harm is fun. There's never going to be. And the whole, and like, the whole argument even for it is the fact that in the 90s, they had a dude with a, mo- with a cross dressing mother. They had a same sex couple. Yeah. They had. Which was probably a bit ahead of his time, so fair play. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, they made jokes about it, yeah. but. Yeah, but it was still They were still, like, I suppose at that time it was the best way they knew how to bring those kind of and they did it well. issues to the forefront. It was so. never actually properly it sexist was. or homophobic jokes, it was just offhand jokes that realistically we all nearly make in our day to day lives. So, but if it's on TV and it's in a script, we all get offended by it for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's still a great show. show. Yeah, great show. Favorite character though? Has to be Chandler. Really? He's so good. He's so funny. I suppose you're a sarcastic prick yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm actually quite sarcastic. I, his sense of humor just. I, I, I think Ross. Ross is so good. Ro- Ro- Ross, 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 he, he has the best lines. Yeah, I, I, Ross like, has the most iconic like, lines. When he gets on Morpheus. Pivot. 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 Yeah, he's so good. He's brilliant. <laughs> the, only, the only probably character in it that I would mind if they disappeared in the morning is probably Monica. It's a, but again, she does have her own like, quirks, like, you know, being a clean freak and always having to win and that kind of thing, so she does definitely add something to it. But... So she's like an Irish mammy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, um, is there any other shows on Netflix you want to talk about before we wrap this up? A hidden gem that not many people know about. If you're a big Narcos fan, and if you haven't watched Narcos, sit down and watch it. El Chapo. El Chapo is There's a new one, Drug Lords. Movie. Is from a fictional series like that? it's it's by the sounds of it it seems like it's somewhere half so it's from the viewpoint of people who are actually involved so there's it's you know they've spoken to like you know uh, Pablo Escobar's like right hand man like yeah. his assa- like his hired assassin who killed over three hundred people for him and one of the quotes from him was I loved uh, Pablo so much that if he asked me to kill my own brother I would 
Like, yeah. The only thing I was about that shows is that they maybe they might not do. They didn't show one. how how evil he really was. They so. did, but they, I think they showed everything in how things progressed. I guess. Yeah. And now, like, there's all like again, like how that's part. He's on about like he loved uh, Columbia. He like built like houses and estates and schools and soccer pitches and all this like you know for them like and that's great or whatever. But at the end of the day, he was responsible for the death of over a thousand lives. He hijacked a plane and crashed it with a couple yeah. hundred people. Like, so I think they could have probably shown his evil or side a bit more because he was evil. He was. Yeah, he was. Bad man. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. But I mean, extreme. He, he had so much potential. He could have been such a great businessman. Like, he was what? Like, seven and four. He was, a, he, 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 he was a great businessman. He just did it with very illegal means. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> very brutal means. Yeah. Uh, was, I suppose if people start buying the Samsung over your app, you kind of actually go and start assassinating Samsung employees. So, yeah, I suppose it is. You said they good. don't? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's actually quite possible. I mean, that's your hidden gem. My <laughs> hidden gem for the weekend. Is. No, my hidden gem is El Chapo. Sorry. Yeah. El Chapo. It's about yeah. El, the, the drug lord, El Chapo. He's still alive. He's in jail at the moment. And the first season just shows the same as Narco. So he got his rise to power in the second season. I won't say much because it kind of gives away a bit of a in the first season. But no, the only thing about El say is there is a lot more subtitles. A lot less English in it. Sit down and watch it and enjoy. Yeah, it's not something that you could be on your phone and have a background noise. Because if you stop watching it for three minutes, you will go and be totally lost. But um, no, it's still really, really good. I would definitely recommend it. And this is what, the second last week of Dry January? Two more weekends to get through? Jesus Christ. Two more weekends it's to only, get through. It's only been two weekends so far. Oy. We can we, we can make this. I mean, my hidden gem for the weekend, and it's one I'm going to definitely be watching again, because it was fucking hilarious, the Dave Chappelle yeah. Netflix special. It's actually not one, but two specials, so you get just over two hours of Dave Chappelle doing what he does best. Mm. Be hilarious so if you're struggling to stay dry for the weekend i guess you know buy some popcorn get get a bottle of coke or whatever mm -hmm. blanky because yeah. let's face it the weather's awful yeah. and joe sit back chill out and laugh your ass off and as far as i'm aware it's actually his last one he's retiring after it mm -hmm. so really just kind of yeah. you know just just soak it in and just enjoy that yeah, yeah. A great comedian is well. finished. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's two um, completely different shows. So there's one which is like in like, you know, big stadium tour, proper thing. And the next one is like him basically like a week later and like joining the small comedy clubs with like 50 people. And he's just there sitting on a stool in the middle of the stage, smoking fags through the whole show. Every 10 minutes you see him reach into the pack for another one. And because it's such a small venue and he's such a big name. He can obviously do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. And he's just sitting there chain smoking, talking mm. crap. And you obviously know that his prepared show was for the big one. And he's just kind of just chatting to the crowd and winging it. <laughs> and he's still brilliant. One more. Brilliant. One more series that we must find out before we finish up, I suppose. Uh, Peaky Blinders, the new season came out. I haven't watched it. I've I've watched, watched it I haven't watched any watched Peaky the, Blinders watched yet. watched the first two episodes and I couldn't get past it, but... Two of my good friends now uh, started watching it last week and have already finished it. So after I finish uh, The Punisher, Peaky Blinders is definitely next on my list because I know it's brilliant. I really uh, need I to watch it though. I, ma I matched this girl on yeah, Tinder yeah. about a week ago and she was like, I was like, oh, on the nights, what are you doing? All this crap, you know, doing what you got to do to do what you got to do. <laughs> and she goes to me, oh yeah, just watching Peaky Blinders. It's absolutely amazing. And I was like, yeah, it's really good, yeah. I mean, like, Tom Hardy's in it. Um, Killian Murphy's in it. Killian Murphy's so, a like, fantastic actor. amazing actors. So I don't know why I haven't watched it yet, because I love my TV series and stuff like that. But yeah. no, I'm going to cast yeah. like that, yeah. Hopefully, by the next time we do um, our next podcast in a couple of weeks, I'll have watched it and I'll yeah. back to you and give you a proper review on it. But no, I would definitely. I suppose we're, we'll probably wrap it up on this. I mean, we're, what, hitting the hour mark, I think, on the recording now. Yeah. Um. So yeah, look, we're gonna probably do run this every two weeks, and I suppose we'd like to probably apologize for this not probably being overly clean. Yeah, because but, uh, it's our first run of this. We're gonna get better over time. If you want to hear anything in particular, in particular, drop us a line. Yeah, Dean, will you like to do the social media handles because I made a balls at the last time. The which the social media handles oh, are yes. Facebook or so, Twitter. Or Twitter, we have. Goost underscore IE, that is spelled G O O S 3D underscore IE. Yeah. Obviously, there's Goost the Facebook page and Goost G O O S 3D dot IE. Yeah, so you can hit us up on any of those, let us know 
well, well, I suppose what you're thinking of this or what you'd like to hear, subjects, topics, yeah. if you have any questions that we can even answer. So if there's a bit of tech that's causing mm-hmm. you a bit of heartache, yeah. ask us the question. We'll obviously message you privately with a response that we try to get back to everybody that messages us, mm-hmm. messages us as fast as possible. And if we think it's something that's going to be good for the podcast, because let's face it, you're having that issue. There's probably a hundred more people yeah. having the same issue. So by all means, let us know. Or if you're thinking of up. picking up any new tech and you want to know if it's worth the money, because obviously tech's expensive these days, yeah, so we can we can have a chat about it and see um, if it yeah. is really worth it or if it's just a novelty that we're off in a week. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll get guest appearances from Martin, Gary, and maybe... Down the line, we can look at getting a few of our friends in different companies and whatnot coming on board. Yeah, we have a lot of friends that are working in the tech industry, so yeah. yeah, we can definitely bring them on board and have a chat. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. thanks. Good luck. Good night. Goodbye.